Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We've got a load of information on the new RSI Apollo triage and medivac variants, the new medical concept ship, as well as lots of updates on the medical gameplay mechanics that are planned for Star Citizen. So let's summarize. The RSI Apollo is a medium medical ship. It's between the Cutlass Red and Endeavour in terms of medical potential. It has a max capacity of six patients, three in each of its two semi-modular rooms. It has a room for two crew with two separate beds for them as well. These two crew can run the entire ship and a fully laden medical facility. It has a size two turret, 28 SCU of cargo space. There is a lot more usable internal space than a cutlass as well. It's 43 meters long, 30 meters wide, and 10 meters high compared to the cutlass black, which is 29 meters long, 26.5 meters wide, but also 10 meters high. There are two entrances, a ramp at the back and a crew lift in the bridge. There are two variants, the Apollo Triage, which is the standard model. It has a target speed of 205 meters per second and two size two laser cannons on its turret. The Medivac is the other confirmed variant. It has a target speed of 195 and more armor, making it also less nimble. It has two size two ballistic miniguns on the turret and two size three missile racks coming with a total of four size two missiles as standard. So it's the more armed version. Room setup wise, there's a reception, two medi bays, each with a toilet washroom, a bridge with crew lift and toilet, two escape pods, which are also beds and a little food area. To the rear of the ship, there are um, the ship items room, so you can go and repair stuff there, cargo area, airlock and ramp. You might be able to fit a bike in the airlock as well, and the whole ship is across a single deck. Medical drones. So the ship can control and comes with two medical drones. They are for medical use only. At a functional level, though, all drones are basically the same in terms of they can be remotely controlled or semi-automated. It's likely players will need to grab people by controlling the drones. They haven't 100% confirmed that as gameplay, but they like hands-on approaches for a lot of the mechanics. The person needs to be immobile or willing to be grabbed as well. The medical drones pick up people and then encase them in a safe environment. They get pulled into the ship and then deposited into one of the beds. You can also use the drones as floating stretchers, which they also very much look like. They can be pushed as well. Basically, the crew don't need to leave the ship as the drones can pick up people outside of the ship and bring them in. The ship will be good for scanning down and finding people in space as well, um, as well as responding to distress signals, service beacons, rescue and medical missions, and even as a support ship to a fleet. The ship is planned to be able to ship to ship dock with other ships as well. It's not going to be able to fit inside a Polaris, but at least one will fit inside the Endeavour hangar. A lot of ships are going to have to wait until they are fully built out to work out what it can fit inside. The ship has VTOL thrusters, so it can operate in atmosphere well. The Cutlass Red versus the Apollo. So the Cutlass Red has a single tier three bed, and we'll come on to exactly what that means in a minute, but basically it can treat minor injuries. And it's a small entry level into the medical career, that Cutlass Red. It is also based on a medium fighter, so it does have that as an advantage. The Apollo is more of a doctor's clinic and has like search and rescue drones, so it's much more focused on medical gameplay. They had pushed the completion of the Cutlass Red back to make sure they have the medical gameplay much more nailed down. They are several months away from completing the Red, though, it looks like. Medical gameplay. So... Certain facilities will support different levels of injury management. Tier 1 will allow you to recover from near-death experiences and fatal injuries. Tier 2, that's going to allow you to recover from serious injuries, such as multiple limb bleed-outs or ruined limbs. Lots of big injuries, basically. And Tier 3, that's going to allow you to cover from just minor injuries, such as um, a single limb or a few limbs being just a bit damaged. In the future, you will be able to swap the medi bay and rooms of the Apollo for a number of different options for each room, dealing with the different tiers of injury. As standard, and with the concept cell, you have the three tier three beds in each of the two medi bays, so six tier three beds in total. But you will be able to swap each of the rooms for two tier two ones or a single tier one one. So you could have any mixture of that as well. So you could have three tier three beds in one room and the tier one bed in another. 
lower level equipment may be able to stabilize runes until they get to a higher level facility. Tier 1 facilities may allow players to respawn there. Respawning in the future will be at nearby medical facilities or medical ships rather than the last location you visited. Being near a major location like Hurston will give you the option to respawn in their dedicated facility, but dying on a remote moon would only give you the option of smaller medical outposts. Having a medical ship in the vicinity allows you to respawn there, providing a bed is available, but this is only for a limited amount of time before returning you elsewhere. A lot of Death of the Spaceman post is still accurate or similar, and I will try and link my original video uh, going over the uh, original concept of how exactly death and all that sort of jazz is handled. But currently in game, limbs can be damaged, crippled and ruined, as well as bleed. And bleeding will basically take damage over time with your character. You can lose function by taking too much damage to limbs. So you can lose the ability to use an arm properly or a leg properly. If your global health pool hits zero or your head or torso is ruined, you'll die. But in the future, you'll have a higher time to kill. You may be able to be knocked down or you're bleeding out or you're stunned but you can still get taken down with enough damage or not receiving help for a long enough time or not having medi pens or whatever to sort of like stabilize you. The goal is to show as well how many deaths and respawns your character has experienced and for that to have a somewhat persistent effect over time. We don't know how long it's going to take to actually heal players though. You will need medical ships for the full medical career or to get the most out of it. However, you will be able to do other sort of like help with medical things, stabilize people, and you'll be able to do a little field medical stuff on as well. If you've got the right kit on your character, you'll be able to um, stabilize and heal people uh, on, the, on the field, but not to the same extent as you could with facilities. Typically, treatment at facilities will be cheaper than calling a player or NPC in to heal you as well. There are going to be some new mission types, so um, they're all going to be centered around medical gameplay. Some of the missions that CIG currently have planned are medical delivery ones, so that will be delivering medical supplies, organ samples and more. That can be done with any cargo ship, but medical ships should have the facilities to keep organic and medical cargo maintained for a longer period of time. Recovery missions, so find injured people and heal them or identify bodies and parts to help put clues together and uncover a wider story. And rescue missions, go to a space station or heavily damaged ship to rescue people in an emergency situation. Survivors may have a variety of different injuries. So any ship with a seat can potentially fulfill the role. Keeping players or patients alive for the returning journey is where a medical ship will have an edge. This is going to be the same for service beacons in the future. Arriving at the emergency location is not the only thing necessary to save lives, as you will also have to scan around and sometimes even investigate a scene as the injured person may have moved since the notification was sent. And that's quite cool for little bits of gameplay. I like the idea of going into a facility where everyone's injured or dead or whatever, and you having to find people, piece together a story. It was that were they attacked by pirates? Is there an area to go to? Maybe you can find where they've been taken if you can get a little fleet together and that sort of stuff. So I like the idea of missions leading on to other little tidbit missions and little um, secrety missions and stuff. The RSI Apollo is on concept sale until the 22nd of August from $225 for the Apollo Triage. If you score over 100,000 points on the ship page sale, a little medivac game that they've got there, then you can access the variant for the Apollo medivac from $250. What do you think of the new medical information and the RSI Apollo? Boom! Quick factoid. Apollo is, among other things, God of Healing, which I assume is one of the reasons they chose the name. But he's also God of Plague, I think. So, you know, whatever. Be sure to check out Shadow. It's a cloud-based alternative to getting or upgrading your gaming PC. It allows you to leverage the power of a, a GeForce 1080 at the moment and a powerful Windows 10 PC on almost any device so long as your internet connection is good enough. It works with Star Citizen Alpha 3.2 and with 3.3 coming in September with object container streaming, it's only going to get better. If you do try it out, be sure to use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. The links to more info in the description below. Uh, every month we do have a ship giveaway as well. This time it's for a Drake salvage ship, the Vulture, with an upgrade to a Prospector as well if you so desire. Donated by Forgotten Heralds, a lawful private military org focused on in-game training and operations that they run regularly now in-game. They're going to be very heavily focused on contracts in the future as well. They are very active and friendly, being appropriate for veterans and new players 
like. Check them out below for lots and lots of information, including a spotlight if you are interested. To be in for a chance of winning that vulture though, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos during this month. Each video gives you another chance to win.